Hi, I'm Dale Popovich and welcome to my studio. I just want to do a small demonstration on how to get your drawing down on your paper. What's most important, what's second important and third. Um, <clears throat> you want to try to keep all your lines very simple. Don't put down a lot because most of the drawing is done with the brush as you proceed to the painting part. So this is a small farm uh, down by the Kankakee River. When you're drawing a drawing for a watercolor, you want to establish your horizon line, ground line first so that you have an unequal division. Never divide your composition in half vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. So I want to put this down first, and I want to get uh, the barn in first. And I need to make it a little bit longer here. And I'm going to put the large shapes in first, but I do want to get my angles right. So I'm putting in the larger part of the barn at this point. Don't be afraid to use your eraser here and there. I use it all the time. And we get the back part of the barn. And we go down. Now I'm going to cover we have a trailer here in the photograph. I'm taking that out. And I'm going to put a lot of shrubs in front of the barn. And I'm going to take the silo and move it out away from the barn ever so slightly because it's really attached around the backside. I like the small inconsistencies of some of the angles. And then I'm going to add some more shrubs in here and get the top of the silo put in like so and I'm going to put the house in the top of the roof is right about here I'm looking at in conjunction with how it works with the barn and I'm going to look at the angle of the roof and that's just about right this is the center It has a little bit of a flat top roof on it. And then it peaks up like this a little bit. Almost like a widow's walk, but not quite. With a chimney up on top. It's kind of an odd looking house. And then I'm going to put on the base of the house here. You know, sometimes I do work a little backwards, but I want to make sure that I get a variety of movements up in here and it's not equal going across so i'm trying to pay attention to a number of things along with the windows and the front porch here which is not running in the middle of the building but it's running off to the side And I see just a little bit of this side over here with perspective. And then I have a small entry porchway on this side, just a little bit that attaches right here. And this comes down in here. And you want to put in a little bit of the detail on, on structures, but don't get carried away with other extracurricular activity. I'm going to put in some of the windows in the foreground of the porch. And we have a small protrusion of a dormer up on top of the roof. 
like so. Now, I have some more short trees out here. And there's a nice ridge in the background. And this ridge actually hits just about here on the house. And it runs like this. Now, over here, I'm going to make the ridge rise up because it runs across the whole picture. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer over here. And we have a small line of trees and shrubs up here. And then we have what's left of the corn. And I'm running it on an angle so it's not running horizontal. And then we have all these wonderful trees in the background. Now the trees I'm just going to indicate with some pencil line. Again, try to keep this as simple as possible. I put in trees where I feel I need them, not where they are in the picture. And I have a small windows here in this front part of the barn. And I'm adding a few more windows in there than what's on the photograph. I'm going to straighten out a few of my lines here. Lots of these things will be covered up. And then I'm going to put a tree in here. And I'm going to put one coming out here, a little bit heavier tree. That will soften around the barn a little bit. And then some of these other shrubs back in here. Now at this point, I'm looking at what I have. <clears throat> and I have to check out the perspective on the corn rows because they are running parallel with the picture plane. And I don't want that to happen. I want a little bit of movement in here. How much I pronounce that in the final painting will be determined when I start the painting. Now I'm going to bring this ridge up just a little bit more in here. And over here I'm going to bring it with a little bit of movement in the background and then run the ground line further back so it looks like it is further back on the side here. And then I'm going to go in and neaten up the house just a little bit. Put another window in here. And it's that simple. I want to make sure that the lines are running correctly. And this way, not all of the structure is showing. It's kind of hid behind, makes it a little bit more interesting. And taking out, there's extra paraphernalia there off to the right here of things that the farmer has dumped um, that are unnecessary to the composition. So I'm looking how this has got different shapes in here, different formation down here. And I'm looking at also the silo and if it's equal to the house it's pretty equal to the house but i don't think it's that bothersome and then we have this is the shadow side of the barn we have a little bit of shadow underneath here and this is really just to note for when you start painting where the light source is coming from. It's coming down on an angle like this. It's, oh, I would say it's about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a early fall day. We have cast shadow here. This is in shadow on this side of the house. We have a little bit of a cast shadow underneath here. And then this is all in shadow here. But it will give you a map of where you want to go so that 
you're not suddenly painting the wrong light source by accident, which I've seen students do that before. And that's all you need to do very quickly. I'm not worried about the sky. I'll take a look at the, the photo when I'm painting it and on how dark I want it to be or how gray I want it to be according to what I'm doing down here. But we always start off with that line that goes across to find where your ground line is or your horizon line. Okay, the reason why I left more space on this side, it gives the eye a turnaround place to come back around. We read from left to right a composition and I have it weighted a little bit heavier over here with the trees and the barn. And then I have this house kind of out by itself with these shrubs that are going to be in here and here. There is a connection, but it leaves a little bit of room for the eye to turn around and come back around. What I'm doing in here is I'm going to put in to help lead the eye uh, some posts out here. In other words, a little bit of a fence separating the the field from the house and the grounds around the house. But I could, if I needed, which I think I'm going to at this particular point, I'm going to put a tree over here just to help bring the eye a little bit back around. And it's not a tree that's going to be large like these trees here. These trees may even come up a little bit more up in here and up in here. But this allows the eye to come back around. It also allows you to see where that ridge starts in the background with the end of the shrubs around the house and it kind of goes back around here and it'll come back easier. But I'm always looking at how things are laid out, the proportion of the sky to the ground, how much information I want to put down here in what I call really an open composition. In other words, you don't have a close-up of something with the forest and the trees and so forth. So this is basically, we have three structures in here. One, one section of, of positive space balancing off another section over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs>